Welcome back to My Classic Car and the Country Street Machines Auto Fest here in Frankenmuth, Michigan. Let's take a few minutes and look at this amazing gathering of classics, rods, and customs. Well, Tony, you're the event coordinator for this monster. How'd this all get started? Dennis, this started 14 years ago in our church parking lot, and we did it for charity back then, and today we still do it for charity. All volunteers. We have about 24 car members today. In uh, Country Street Machines? Country Street Machines, about 24 of us, and everybody volunteers their time. All the booths here are all run by volunteers. Everything goes back to our town. And you guys put this whole thing on, and it's still a, a community event, still a charity event. And we plan on keeping it that way. Uh, it's just grown. We'll have 1,500 cars down here by tomorrow. Well, it's amazing, and the weather cooperated. such a fantastic setting, and what a great show. Beautiful place. Michigan's little Bavaria. We can't beat it. Carl, this is a really fine 57, and it looks pretty stock. Is that right? Thank you very much. Yes, it's stock. Right What's under the hood? The, it's a 283 standard, the carburetor, everything standard on it. Probably better than when it comes from the factory, than brand new. It's back, back in 57, though. Back in 57. Well, this car is interesting also because of its restoration story. Who restored this car? Uh, about 60 kids from Warren Community Schools in Warren, Michigan. And how long did it take? Three years. Wow, and it was a vocational A vocational class? deal where the kids educated on body work. About 15 or 20 grown-ups also worked on it. The instructor was Frank Antonucci. Well, it's great, and it caught my eye because of this, what's attached to it? It's a 57 Chevrolet station wagon with the rear front door cut off and cut ahead of it and spliced and welded. And what's the bed? The bed is a Chevrolet pickup, a flat bed out of a late model Chevrolet pickup. Carl, mm -hmm. this car's got a story. So does this trailer. Thanks Thank a lot. Okay, thank you very much. So Annette is president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Frankenmuth. How does the town feel about this event? Oh, we think it's fantastic. We have a lot of uh, different people that came in from across the United States into our small community, probably people who may not have ever come here before. And they bring their cars and they come here, they have a very nice time, enjoy the community, eat a lot, have just a lot of uh, other vehicles to look at, enjoy themselves. So we enjoy it a lot. Well, if they're anything like us, they're going to leave with an unforgettable memory of Frankenmuth in this event. I think so. Um, Frankenmuth is um, world famous for a lot of things and now we're entering into the auto area. Well thanks so much for having Thank us. You. Fabulous town, fabulous event. Thank you very much. Well Tom, this is a beautiful piece and I understand you're the builder, is that right? Yes, uh, I, this is owner built, uh, the exception of the body, which is built by Kirk Duquette in Cincinnati, Ohio. What's the wood? It's all eastern hard rock maple. Wow, what did it start life as? A uh, 39 Ford uh, pickup truck frame Uh huh. and the uh, Cowl is off a 36 Ford Roadster as well as the fenders. The hood is a stock 1936 Ford. And the grill is a new old stock 1936 Ford. Well, I love how you set up these doors too. Yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty simple setup. And how'd you lay out the interior? The uh, interior is out of a 1995 uh, Olds Calais, the front seats. The rear seats out of a Ford Escort. The steering column and uh, steering wheel are from a 39 Ford. So it's pretty much Ford through and through? All except the engine and transmission. And what does power this baby? Uh, it's a fuel injected 350 Chevy with a 350 transmission. So it gets up and goes too? Just a little bit. Well, Tom, it's beautiful. You do great work. Well, Thanks thank you. for sharing it with All us. Right. Appreciate it. After I had finished visiting with car owners, our host, Tony Deanna, asked if I'd like to be the Grand Marshal of their cruise event. I was excited and honored especially when Tony handed me the keys to his beautiful 40 street rod. I ain't got them. <laughs> well, they're not mine. I got them, but they're not mine. As the 30-mile cruise along scenic Michigan back roads began, I got the feeling I was in an episode of Home Improvement with Tim Allen. He's visited Frankenmuth in the past, and I know, being the car nut that he is, he would have enjoyed Tony's cool rod as much as I did. I know this is a cruise, but this straightaway is calling out to me. You know, 
This much fun should almost be illegal. Welcome back to My Classic Car. When I walk around an event like Frankenmuth, I'm always reminded that the true test of a good design is how well it holds up over the years. The really good designs are timeless, looking as good today as they did years ago. The classic two-seat Thunderbird is an example of a timeless design. It still looks great some 40 years later. Ford built the two-seater from 1955 through 57, and the car has been a consistent collector's favorite ever since. I visited with a man who is known around the world as an authority on these timeless Thunderbirds and got an up-close look at my personal favorite, the 57. We're in the great state of Texas, Dallas to be exact, today with Amos Minter. Amos, welcome to the show. Thanks. Amos, I've never been surrounded by so many two-seat birds. Now you've been collecting, restoring, and, and dealing in these for how long? 28 years. That's a while, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, this one caught my eye. What's this color? This is Golden Glow Yellow. It's a very rare color in 56, and this car is fully optioned with all the, with all the power toys. Well, you got a lot of different colors here, too. Yeah. You got a beautiful red torch 57, red. Torch, torch Red. red. Now this one's interesting. 56, what, what is that color? This is sage green. This is a very unique color only used in 56 and only on the T-Bird in 56. You had another name for that green. No cell green. <laughs> no cell Ford green. many times calls it Thunderbird green in 56. Uh-huh. And it was only 56 they used only that color. Only 56 that had that color. It's a unique color. Now that's another unique this color is right a there. unique color. I've only owned three of these in my life. It is a Navajo Gray 56 with a Fiesta in white interior. It came in with the original paint into our shop and it's an outstanding example of a Navajo Gray car. It is beautiful. Now, you say you've owned three of these. How many T-Birds have you handled over the years? In the vicinity of between 17 and 1800 at this point. That is unbelievable. Several of them we've had back again, so they're getting counted two and three times when they come back. Well, there's a, one in particular I want to have a, a close-up look at. You've got another torch red with a removable hardtop. Yes. Well, yeah. let's, let's go have a, have a look at that baby. Good. Well, Amos, this is a gorgeous car. Thanks. Now, there's some distinctive features on the 57. One is, of course, the fins that, that the 56 didn't have in the same way, and it's longer. Yes, in 57. And there's no Continental kit. Not from the factory. You could get it aftermarket, yes. but that's Other, the first year without the Continental yes. kit. Uh -huh. Removable hardtop. Yes. And there are a number of different options here, too. Right. Uh, convertible tops, tonneau tops. The way you wanted it was the way Ford wanted to sell you the car. And actually, the porthole was standard, and you had to special order the no porthole. Yes, in 57. Now, beautiful interior on these cars. Thank you. This car has a custom all-leather interior. Everything is done in the original styles. Everything is all-leather with the exception of the door panels, kick panels, and dash. And you couldn't get that in 57 unless you knew somebody. Technically, no, you couldn't do it from the factory, and this is a special order for a customer of ours. I've always loved the instrumentation on this car, too. Let's pop the hood and look underneath, though. Okay. Now, this is a decode car, a 312 V8. 245 horsepower, four-barrel car. And decode meant it was a single four-barrel. Yes. There was the E-code, which was a dual four-barrel. With and, 285 horsepower. And an F-code, which was supercharged. Yes, sir. Could have up to 300 horsepower. Yeah, that was a lot in 57. A lot of power. Well, I'll tell you, Amos, we're in your shop, and you've got a rack over there. Let's, let's put it up and look underneath. I'd like to. I'll let you close the hood. Okay. Well, she looks pretty nice underneath, too, Amos. Great. Well, all 55 through uh, the 57s have the XL member in the center of the uh, frame, the same uh -huh. thing as the full-size Ford convertible and early Corvettes of their day. The air shocks is an, is an aftermarket add-on. A 57 will have a red oxide rear end chunk that will be different from the 55 and 56 models. Everything under here is all original and all stock, with the exception of the air shocks. Well, it looks fine. Let's take it down and take it for a spin. Great. Amos asked if I'd like to drive, and believe me, he didn't have to ask twice. Even though I've owned several 60s T-Birds, I've never had a chance to climb behind the wheel of a two-seater.
Amos' love for these classic Thunderbirds shows in the quality of his restorations. The workmanship is flawless. This 57 drove better than when it was new. Amos remembers the passion he had for these cars as a young boy. He used to stop by the local Ford dealer almost every day and stare at the two-seater in the showroom. The Ford dealer finally came out and said, son, I will give you the little plastic model if you'll promise to not come back until you're old enough to buy a car. <laughs> Amos, you made my day. I've never driven one of these. <laughs> Great. I'm glad Thanks you. so much for joining us on the show, Amos. Our pleasure, pleasure to have you. Thanks. Beautiful birds. My classic car will be right back. Well, that wraps up another edition of My Dennis, Classic Car. Well, Dennis, hold on. You can't leave Frankenmuth, Michigan without one of our traditional German steins. Oh, that's beautiful. Tony, thanks a lot. Thank you for coming Thank out. You, Gene, you guys Gene, got a great out. event. Thanks Thank again. You.